How did we get from this colt throwing himself on the ground on his very first day to simulating tying in just four sessions? Stick around, Seth is gonna show you how. Welcome back to Becky Emil Horse Training and we are on day four of halter breaking a weanling and this is a last call to streak that's the little bay colt we're working on here and this is seth carey that is going to be demonstrating for us today if you've been following along up to this point we have three other videos that uh, follow the progress of this colt over the last three sessions and this is day four of handling him we're starting off by catching him the same way we have been. We run him up behind this gate and kind of put him in a squeeze, and then we're able to get the halter on him. And every day, it's kind of been the same. You know, one of these other two colts go up in there with him. Uh, today, you know, and both of these other two colts, they've already been halter broke. They're pretty gentle already. It's this little bay colt that has not been handled yet a whole lot. And so this is his fourth session. And Seth is able to get in there and get the halter on him without really putting a hard squeeze on him this time. You know, it's getting a little bit easier every single day. And that's kind of the way we should make progress with these horses. We didn't have to totally squeeze him back in there. And this other badger colt that's in there with him, you know, he's pretty quiet, good-minded colt that's going to be a good... A, a, a good influence on him and going to keep him nice and quiet. Seth takes an opportunity to scratch and rub on him. You know, any chance you can get to scratch and rub on these guys is going to, you know, improve your relationship with them. Today, Seth's plan is to do all the work that he's been working on with this colt, but he also plans on tying him today, or at least simulating being tied for the first time. So he's going to go through all the same steps that he's gone through up until this point, planning on leading him out of the pen and again we talked about this last time around walking through that gate and not necessarily using help to get through the gate it's all part of it when you're by yourself if you didn't notice it right there back it up a little bit and take a look when this colt stalled out seth was able to just move those shoulders over for him and he was able to keep his feet moving again anytime they stall out on you if you've got good shoulder movement, you can get these colts to move for you again and pick up their feet if you just change direction just a little bit with him. And going through the gate is, is no different. It's actually one of the things that helps teach these horses to get their feet moving and maneuvering is going through the gate because they have to use the front end and the hind end to get around and come through that gate. Have you ever had a horse stall on you when you go through a gate? It's kind of annoying, isn't it? And so, and, and I have those colts that just freeze up and you're like, come on, come on. And you want to spank them and make them go a little bit faster for you. And, and they don't. And that's all part of the learning process is teaching them to walk through that gate and move those shoulders and move that hind end because it's not going to be very long before I'm on this colt's back and I'm going to need him to open and close that gate from his back. And then again, I have my dogs out here with me. This time I still have my two hunting dogs out, whether being Rocky, they're not going to pose any sort of a uh, distraction. I mean, they're not going to nip at his heels. They're not going to aggressively try to hurt him or anything, but they are going to be a little bit of a distraction there. They're going to be something else that he has to pay attention to and be aware that something else is there. So the first thing we're going to do once Seth gets down here by the tack room is go through his little obstacle course he has set up for all these colts to walk through. This helps get them thinking. This helps get them settled on a routine. This colt has already been through the obstacle a couple of times. We've established a relationship here. We've established some consistency. The colt knows what to be, what's expected of him. He follows Seth through. He follows and gives to pressure. He's moving his shoulders over. All really, really good behaviors to have. And Seth is going to do this every time before he goes on to the mo next most difficult thing he's going to work on next. We see Seth take a moment to stop and pet on this colt. And they both kind of take a moment to take a little break, take a deep breath before they move on to the next obstacle. And this is something we have to do when we ride them too. 
That's why they say you ride the same horse you lead, because all of these things that you do on the ground all lead up to how they're going to be when you're on their back. We have to give them the release. We have to give them the time during that release so they understand that what they did was correct. And now we're going to go back into this bridge and work on it. And, you know, the colt refuses initially. And that's why we have to be so incredibly consistent with all of our work, you guys. That's why we have to introduce these things over and over and over again because they forget. And this, he just worked on it the day before. So this is not brand new information that he hasn't seen in a couple months. This was the day after that session where he didn't want to go over the bridge the first time. And Seth worked through it. I want to say it took him like 20 minutes the day before, if I remember correctly. This time it took five minutes and I have fast forward through all of this. So we don't have to sit through all of it, the entire video, but I did want to fast forward through it. So you guys weren't sitting here having to deal with, uh, you know, get bored with watching this happen. This colt finally puts a front leg up on it and decides he's going to step up on it. Seth releases the pressure. We can see a loop in that lead rope when when he releases the pressure and it's ever so slight but it's just enough that tells this colt yes you did what i wanted you to do seth's asking him still he's putting a little bit more pressure back on to ask this colt to get the rest of the way up on the bridge and you know the flies might be helping us just a little bit here because every time this colt stomps you know it's helping to pick up those hind legs for us if you can't see that already but uh but yeah to go back to what I was saying before, you know, he put the pressure on him. He pulled on the lead rope. The colt finally stepped up. Seth released that pressure for a brief moment and then put it back on again to ask the colt to step completely up onto the bridge. And now it's just a waiting game. It's just a matter of having patience and waiting here for this guy to step up on the bridge the rest of the way. And then we're going to see how to get him the heck off of it. Now I want you to watch what happens once Seth gets this colt completely up on the bridge. He releases that lead rope, walks up to him and pets him on the head. Now the release in the lead rope was the yes sir thank you. And then the pet on the head was what he's been working on this entire time going up to this colt's face and petting him on his face. When he tries to get the colt down, he tried to pull forward initially and the colt wasn't going to step so he just took him to the side and the colt moved his shoulders and stepped off the bridge and that's all it takes but you have to have that shoulder control initially to make this happen if you don't have that shoulder control at this stage you're not going to get these particular maneuvers you're not going to be able to get the upper hand on some of these behaviors it doesn't matter how big and strong you are you're not going to get it done and that also follows over to when i'm riding if i don't get the shoulder control or the hind end control there's a lot of maneuvers i'm not going to get so this all starts with a good foundation in your groundwork okay and again you know seth has really developed a good relationship with this colt he's released when he was supposed to release and told him yes thank you that's exactly what i wanted he's developed this relationship with his colt by petting him on his head the colt readily accepts being petted on his head and that's something he's had to work up to if you guys haven't seen that part you need to go back to the first two episodes of this halter breaking session and take a look at him because you couldn't touch this colt's head in the very beginning we've had to work up to that 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 was one of the very first things we had to get done and then we got the shoulders moving. And actually, I think Seth got the shoulders moving long before he was able to touch this colt on his head, at least readily like that. So again, he's asking the colt to get it back up on the bridge. He's putting a lot of pressure on that lead rope. You know, he's not pulling real hard. You don't see Seth like leaning back on this on this lead rope. I mean, you can see the, the colt doesn't jerk him off balance. Again, Seth is about He's darn near six foot and he's about 175, 180 pounds. So no, this colt's not going to jerk Seth's off his feet. But Seth's not jerking and pulling on him either. He's just holding. He's just holding and kind of being a fence post here. And then as soon as this colt gives the pressure, he releases the pressure and goes up and pets him. That's all it is to it. It's just a release of pressure at the right moment. And, and then taking a lot of patience at a lot of time and remaining focused. And once he gets the colt up there, he pets and loves on him again, 
gets soft in the lead and releases the pressure and the colt wants to follow him and he tries to take him back over the other direction now remember if you remember yesterday this colt was not real happy about going back over this direction in fact he threw a pretty big fit and you know it's it's something that has to do with their hard wiring and their brain they'll go find one direction but they won't go find the other and we got to work on that every single time we work with a horse we got to work on both sides of them both directions in whatever we're working on with them so again seth takes a moment to rub and pet on this colt but he doesn't want to end on that note. You know, that was kind of a panicky, scared slip a little bit. And he doesn't want him to be scared of the surface because that's going to develop bigger problems down the road. He does want to end on a nice, you know, walk over. And we got it. And he was quiet about it. Pets and rubs on him. And again, this cold did not want to go over that bridge from that direction yesterday. So this is a huge, huge win for us. So... We're pretty excited about that and we move on to the tying part okay i know that was a really big sigh but um tying can be kind of scary right you know they can throw themselves down they can bang their head on the rail a lot of bad stuff can happen when we tie them but before we tie we're gonna walk in and out of this pen really quick go in and out again we've talked about this in our last episode these horses that are raised out, they don't know what it means to walk in and out of a corral. They don't know what it means to walk in and out of a gate. So this is all brand new information for them. If this colt were to ever be sold down the road, you know, it would be complicated for somebody to purchase him and expect him to go right into a corral, walk through a stall door or a corral door or a gate like this. Um, I don't plan on selling him, but in the future, I'm going to have to walk him in and out of stalls because he's going to come down and live in one of these corrals when he gets started as a two-year-old. So this is all good foundation work for him to learn to make him a better citizen down the road for me. Now we're headed over to the tie rail, and Seth's plan is to take a couple wraps with this lead rope and sit there with him. And I know that takes an awful lot of focus on all of our parts. He takes a double wrap and then uh, just sneaks underneath his neck there and, and then goes and stands on the other side of the rail and he actually sets his timer for five minutes. And now I'm not going to make you guys sit through all of that five minutes. We're going to fast forward through all of that. And now I wouldn't necessarily choose to uh, sneak underneath their neck like that in this instance, but it's kind of, you know, what Seth had to do to get around this rail. Um, I will tell you that when I was starting Colts, uh, oh shoot, about 10 years ago, I was riding stuff that I couldn't necessarily sneak underneath their neck like that. They would spook if I went underneath their neck like that. And I know I've talked about this in some of my riding videos and they would spook if I went underneath their neck like Seth just did. But I was climbing on their back and riding them, and I had no business being on their back, but I was getting them broke. And uh, so, I, you know, I'm kind of glad that Seth went under his neck, and I know it's not the safest thing to do. I'm not telling you guys to just do this, okay? It's not the safest thing to do, but there was really no other option in this instant unless he would have started by being on the other side of this colt when he first walked him up to the tie rail or walked him up to the tie rail in a different spot where he could kind of sneak around the other side of him. Um... But again, we didn't see a huge reaction out of this colt when when Seth uh, did that. So I'm going to roll with it. And um, I'm okay with it. Just be careful when you do stuff like that at home. Okay, you guys? So our full five minutes is up. And you can see Seth sat with him the whole time and just focused on him. And he kind of talked to him the whole time. Colt didn't get upset or anything, and that's because of the foundation that he has put on this colt up until this point. He's got a lot of patience, and this colt has learned just to give to pressure, and he finishes it off by petting him on his forehead. You know, he didn't tie him hard. He didn't leave him, you know, and just let him make his own choices. He kind of stayed there just in case he wanted to pull back or something. Colt never did, which tells me this colt is super, super good-minded. We're going to head back up to the corral now. I sped it up again just to get back up here because I also wanted to show you something else we've implemented into this session. We're going to go back through the gate, and I'm going to follow him back through this gate. 
and he is going to take this colt clear over to the pen where he kind of puts him in that little squeeze panel and remove his halter there and he's trying to make that little area a good place for this colt you know this colt has learned that you know it's not the best place to be when he gets squeezed up behind the panel because he gets caught so now we're releasing him back there and maybe he'll associate going back there with good things and that's what we're ultimately searching for is to end each session on a really good note on a really good experience and make sure he's happy and he's been pet and rubbed on again and so that's where seth is going to finish it for today i sure appreciate you guys watching i thank you for spending your time with me and don't forget if you have not watched the previous three sessions i will link them in the description box below stay tuned because seth is going to tie him hard in the upcoming session and he's going to start teaching him how to load in the horse trailer. So stick around for that. You're not going to want to miss it. Thanks for watching. I sure hope you guys have a great rest of your day.